right guys welcome back to the channel today we're gonna be working on uh, one of these m2 silverados we're gonna be working on the orange one and just in case you want to make a custom on one of these uh, you should know that uh, the one the orange one that's supposed to be the original one the back part where the back wheels go it's a bit wider than the other one that's uh, a custom as you can see it has wide tires and to make them fit the chassis is uh, the different uh, they're both the same in the front they have the same distance or the same uh, width just a little bit of uh, information just in case you're planning on working on one of these so let's start taking uh, these this uh, truck apart to begin the process And if you didn't know, this is a uh, two-part casting. The bed is separate from the front. And actually, it's a three-part casting, if you count, of uh, the, the hood or the bonnet. Got to take out this little screw here holding the dash in place to be able to take out uh, the hood. And as you can see, the screw that was holding the dash is different. Now, as you can see, the engine is held in place by two little tabs and the windows have a mushroom post. <clears throat> now that everything is taken apart, we need to deal with all these small parts that are held together by glue and little plastic uh, tabs. So I'm going to start with the... Uh, with the windows here I want to drill out the post very slowly and once I've uh, removed uh, the mushroom post I uh, stick a toothpick just to give me some space and I introduce this plastic tab and the window just uh, pops out, as you can see. So now, uh, let me get my uh, X-Acto knife and uh, I'm gonna cut the two tabs that are holding the engine in place. And once I cut them off I I poke with a toothpick from the bottom and it does have glue I was lucky enough that on one side the glue did not you know hold it in place that much and I was able to pop it out as you can see you can see the glue right there we gotta remove that now let's uh, cut the tabs holding the front bumper that was easy came out pretty easy same deal here just push it from the inside 
since I uh, I don't really want to break them it makes the uh, putting it back together a lot easier now the the front grill was a little bit harder you got I used a uh, my exacto here and I just poked at one behind one of the headlights you gotta be careful that uh, you don't cut yourself if you use a flat tip screwdriver you probably mess it up you want to use something thin like the exacto here slowly poke at it luckily that that glue like I mentioned before it's good enough to hold everything in place but in the event that you want to take you know take it apart with a little force you could uh, break it apart there it goes start coming off see the the glue was uh, in different spots now it does have two little holes there and uh, I'm just trying to clean them up a little bit remove that uh, remaining piece of plastic Once you put the 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 casting in a uh, paint remover, it also helps to remove all that uh, glue residue. Now let's uh, work with the rear bumper. That was also very easy. Same deal. Just cut the tabs and. Uh, it just falls apart there and now the hardest part was the tail lights as you can see the tail lights uh, they don't you can't see them from the inside of the tab and uh, it basically it took a while slowly but surely just poking around the edges with the exacto knife and uh, being very very careful not to cut myself and not to break the lens I was able to uh, take it out but that, that little part did have a lot of glue but eventually it came out or it came off so now let's uh, put everything I dip it in the paint remover. This is a aircraft paint remover. As you can see, it starts working pretty fast. And from there, I take everything to the sink to remo remove uh, any remaining uh, paint. All right, guys, for this part, I took pictures because it, it this, this step took a while. I'm using polystyrene, different sizes to create my own chassis here. Uh, if this would have been like a Hot Wheels, which is one piece, it would have worked perfect but being that this was a two-part casting uh, once it was completed it wasn't strong enough to make both pieces stiff enough so I started to add little pieces of brass to uh, make everything stronger all right guys quick update here suspension is working Brrr. Brrr. Ooh. all right 
So this thing is not pretty right now. And as you can see, the the piece of wire, the piece of wire that I'm using here tends to go to the side of the tire. And we are going to address that right now. So I have a video on how to do a suspension, articulated suspension like this one. So I'm not gonna get into it. But uh, there you go. Because this casting is, is a two part, I think it would have been better if I would have made the whole thing um, I made out of brass. But it would have been a lot more difficult. So it still works and it is solid. So it's not gonna break. It moves just like a like a real car. Yeah, a real car, you know, the cat moves around. So what I'm planning on doing is see it moved again. And to fix that problem, I'm gonna create a re re rectangle here that uh, it will eliminate or it will keep this from going to the side. And from that, I could do also a some steps here or so we could step here or maybe do a an exhaust also if i can and a skip plate here in the front and maybe in the back i don't know yet so let me see what i could come up with and i'll be back all right guys check it out check it out check it out oh look at that flex Ooh. All right, so let's have a little talk. I don't know if I mentioned this before, because it's been like almost five days since I started working with this. But I removed the the tempo, the auto zone tempo on the back window. Uh, I had to do, I had to sand it down. But don't worry, I still got to polish the the windows here. It, uh, I tried the the easy off method and it did not work. I guess that ink is uh, really strong. And from my previous update, here's how we look it now. Created the skip plate here. I created these uh, rock sliders. We can see here in case we decide to go rock crawling. And I created this cage here which holds the the wire in place for uh, the suspension now this made the wire a bit stiffer it's not as soft as before but it's okay it still you know it functions as like you just saw it rolls perfect everything's working and i've also created some exhaust you can see here the the pipe goes all the way to the front towards the engine and it comes out on the side here now I was when I created this I, I was thinking of, about creating a, uh, a boxed in transfer case I don't know if you know what that is so I could run a uh, drive shaft inside but you know I could basically if i would have made this lower or higher it could have worked because if i make a drive shot here once it goes down it's going to want to hit this that's the big you know the first big no-no here then on the rear if i did a uh, a drive shot it was going to cover up this screw and i need that screw being that this is a two-part casting and this is what's holding everything together. So I've, uh, all this, I don't know if you saw it from before, it had a big blob here. And I've, uh, using my Dremel, reduced everything, trying to make it a little bit prettier. But over here, I really can't remove any more or everything's gonna fall apart. So now, we're basically ready for paint. So I'm, uh, 
most likely I'm gonna paint it because uh, in the future I might make another one but fully brass and everything will be uh, soldered together with a sol soldering iron might look better but for now this is gonna do I'm gonna paint oh before I go let me let me tell you a little tip so if if you own a few M2 and you think that the the screws they tend to strip right I think I might know why you're having problems uh, by looking at it you might think that this is a Philip screw but in reality this is a JIS screw and what is a JIS is a Japanese industry standard and they look similar to a Philip but they're not if you own a Japanese car and you have see any screws that are similar to a Philip and you try to undo them or loosen them up with a regular uh, Phillips screw you pretty sure you're not gonna be able to turn it loose or you're gonna strip it now the JIS screwdrivers are very expensive and you for it to fully work you have to get the specific size of the screw that you're working with now just like Philip they come in different sizes like you see here but here's a little tip you have a regular fillet right you wind down the top make it flat you see look at this other one oh, this one is obviously smaller but you see the tip here and on this one I made it flat that's the biggest difference of a JIS screw. Uh, the hole here is not as deep. So when you try to unscrew it with a Phillip, what you're really doing is, you know, you know, stripping the sides here because it's really not grabbing. Now this is not perfect. Let me let me unzoom here. It's not perfect, but instead of spending maybe. 12 or 13 14 dollars on a JIS uh, screwdriver you take your cheap screwdriver here and uh, it'll work and you don't have to because I'm pretty sure you're stripping the, the threads because you're trying to you know push it you know trying to get the, the screwdriver not to slip but that's all you got to do you got to make it make the tip flat and as you can see it uh, it all screws very easy now you could take these apart as many times as you want and you're not going to have any problems so now let's get ready for paint all right guys check it out this thing is still wet hand painted it using this metallic paint gunmetal gray bought this at a uh, walmart i believe there it is and now I painted the casting using Krylon Gray Primer. This one has a good nozzle there. Very fine spray. Check it out. So now I'm gonna paint it using Krylon Stained. It's supposed to be stained here. There you go, stained glass. Canary yellow is the color, but because this paint is translucent, it's going to mix with the color of the primer and you're going to see the color transformation that it's going to take and I'll be back. Well guys, here it is. So you see that uh, painting with that uh, stained glass yellow over gray primer makes the car look green almost like an olive green it looks very uh to me at least it looks very vintage i like it i like it here's a cap 
I'm debating right now if I should do a a two tone paint job. Not really sure yet. I guess uh, you're gonna have to wait until I do the final reveal, and I'll be back. All right, guys, quick update here. Look at the glass. Beautiful. And I just wanted to show you the interiors. I painted them dark brown and I'm just putting everything here together I'm using clear RTV silicone just in case I want to take it all apart again and paint it another color so let, let me continue guys here it is I present to you big green that's the name I'm gonna give it big green man this thing is so smooth look at that look at that the color of the interior I think it goes perfect with the color of the casting as you can see I gave it a texture look for the inside of the bed similar to the look what's called a rhino truck bed liner which is a spray on truck bed liner I don't know if you guys know what that is and I gave it the black trim all around the windows bumpers the only thing that I did not paint green I mean black was the inside bucket because I did not want to take off those the little headlights but it looks very good I think this thing came out sweet I think it's right now is about a good time for you to hit that like button hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so you don't miss any videos i really like how this one turned out guys i even made this little diorama here just so i could play with it this is the first m2 custom that i do and I think it turned out beautiful. Look at this, look at this. Oh. <laughs> Even does a wheelie. All right guys, that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the result. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.